your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia. Claudia, based on the original stories by Rose Franken. Brought to you, transcribed Monday through Friday, by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax, and while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. Hey! Hey, is the lady of the house in? The lady of the house is in here. Where is here? In the bedroom. Where'd you think? I could think in the kitchen, in the cupboard, under the piano we haven't got, in the bathtub. Hi. Say, what are you doing? I'm starting to undress. That was the general impression that I got. Why? Because I was dressed up. Well, that is something you have to do before you undress. Yes, I follow it that far. But I still don't get it at this time of day. Say, you aren't sick or something. Me sick? Sure you haven't picked up that round robin cold your mother and I had? Oh, not a sniffle. I never catch cold. You know that. You don't boast. You will if you stand around in a slip like that. I still don't know why you're undressing. I'm not anymore. I'm dressing up again. I was just rehearsing. Mm, sounds like a fire drill. <laughs> Timing yourself? Nope. I was just seeing how I looked in an evening gown. Mm, you look right nice in an evening gown. You going somewhere? Mm -hmm. Got a date. Oh, that's good. I think it's going to be very good. With uh, anybody I know? Mm -hmm. He's tall, handsome, very masterful. And I'm very much in love with him. That's nice. Now, what's up for tonight? Mm, nothing. What would you like to do? Nothing, but you said we had a date. Oh, didn't I tell you the date isn't tonight, it's tomorrow night. You haven't told me anything up to this moment that makes sense. I'm sure I told I told you over the phone this afternoon. Oh, no, that's right. When I called your office, you were out. I, I did mention it to Roger. And Roger was out when I got back to the office. Now, suppose you bring me up to date. Julie sent us tickets to the theater. Then we have got a date for tonight. I didn't say for tonight, it's for tomorrow night. Oh, and that's why you were dressing up when I came in. I wasn't dressing up. I was dressing on. I, I mean, I was undressing. I was just trying on my gown. To go to the theater tomorrow night? Mm-hmm. From a long experience of looking gift horses in the mouth, people usually give away tickets to the theater because they know it's a dull show. Oh, it couldn't be that. Julie told me they'd got mixed up and they had tickets to the horse show, too, or something. And they would rather look at horses because it would be more fun. <laughs> what show? Tristan. First time. And a soldier. That's what I thought you said. Mm. Look, Claudia, uh, Tristan is an opera. I know. You don't call going to the opera going to a show. Come right out with it, like a man. Say opera right off. It's one of those times when it's permissible to call a spade a spade. Don't you like music? I love music. Well, don't you like Tristan, then? I love Tristan. Well, then what? what? I do not like the opera. Oh, but that's where they play Tristan. Mm hmm I mean, if you like Tristan, that's where you hear it. Not me, my ducky. I take my Tristan on the phonograph or on the radio. But then you can't see it. Exactly, my sweet. Music was meant to be heard, not seen. Have you ever noticed at the opera how people sit with their eyes closed? Mm, real music lovers. That's how they enjoy the music more. No, darling. That is so that they will not enjoy it less. What? By closing their eyes, they manage to shut out the image of a 360-pound Tristan pouring out his love to a 380-pound Isolde. Oh, all opera stars aren't fat, are they? No, not all of them. Well, then, come on, be a gambler. Take a chance. Maybe our Tristan and Isolde will be nice and romantic tomorrow night. There isn't a chance. Are these uh, the tickets on the dresser? Yep. Oh. What now? Worse and more of it. These are box seats. Isn't that the best? There couldn't be anything worse. In the first place, there's the chairs. What's wrong with the chairs? Little spindly gold things, and your leg goes to sleep. And oh. Then there's the people. What's wrong with the people? Everything's wrong with the people. People who sit in boxes sit there not to hear music, but to be seen hearing music. And then they're not sound asleep, and... They sound asleep and snoring, a nice little upper-class snore. So if they're not doing that, they're you talking. You don't make it sound very attractive. Look, darling, you really wanted to go, didn't you? Huh? Well, 
You got yourself all in the frame of mind to look forward to it. Mm, sort of, I... Ben, we're going to the opera tomorrow night. What's more, we'll have a swell time. You change your tune very quickly. Well, I never tried listening to Tristan sitting beside the woman I love. That sounds very romantic, the way you say it. A king of England was pretty romantic when he said it, too, darling. David, can a woman ever be so important to a man that he could give up the most important thing in his life for her and not regret it? Why, I'd give up the widest mountain. No, I'd give up the deepest river. <laughs> I'd give up the throne of England if I had you. Do you realize you didn't kiss me when you came home? And what do you think I'm doing now? Kissing you. Will you have another cup of coffee, dear? Mm, just half a cup. You know, darling, this box at the opera for tomorrow night raises certain rather fundamental problems. As for instance? Well, for one, I can't sit beside a beautiful woman in evening clothes dressed in my comfortable old flannel suit. But you look nice in your dinner jacket. Darling, my dinner jacket would be just as out of place as an opera box as a suit of overalls. I don't follow you. A dinner jacket is dressed enough to sit in the orchestra at the opera, but nothing less than tails is acceptable in a box. <laughs> Yeah? What's so funny? Oh, I don't know. It's just the idea of it. Somehow I don't see you in tails. It's, it's, it's just not your type. Oh, it isn't my type, is it? Nope. And just what type, young lady, do you think I am? Oh, sort of loungy with a pipe in your mouth. and No, it's, it's just not the type. Darling, maybe we can change the tickets to orchestra. We'll do nothing of the kind. It'll be a box or nothing. So, you don't think I have a full dress suit? I know everything you have and you haven't. We men have our secrets, you know. <laughs> Remember that uh, big box on the top shelf of the closet? Yes. That is my hidden past. Huh. And my tails. And there's something else that you don't know. How I got my tails. How <laughs> the elephant got his trunk by Rudyard Kipling. <laughs> <laughs> if I didn't know you had him, how could I know how you got them? Tell me how you did get them, David. Well, it's a long story. You mean a long tail? <laughs> Puns are the lowest form of humor. <laughs> well, once upon oh, a time... No. I was in my college glee club. David, you never told me. Well, I wasn't in the glee club very long. I only sang once, and that was the beginning and end of my career. Oh. And the first time and the last time I ever wore my full dress suit. What happened? Have you ever heard of a great singer losing his voice? Well, I lost mine the first time out. Oh. Actually, I am the only living singer to lose his voice by popular election. The whole glee club voted that I couldn't carry a tune. They wouldn't even let me carry the music. <laughs> Say, my pipe must be in the other room. Uh, it's on the table beside your chair. Oh. Oh, here it is. This pipe has a habit of losing itself. Just where you leave it. What are you doing now? Getting a chair to stand on to get my dress suit off the shelf's top of. I think a dress rehearsal is in order for me, too. Whoop. Whoop? What? Wearing the suit. It smells like it just came from a moth's funeral. It smells like camphor. The curfew tolls the knell of pop parting moth. <laughs> the flitting swarm flies quickly away from me. Maybe if I wear a lot of perfume. We'd smell like beauty and the beast. <laughs> How long since you wore it? Years. Well, there goes. I'll try them on. Mm. Mm -hmm. There. Uh, do you suppose the tailor could let out these trousers? I'll take them first thing in the morning. All right. We'll lay the trousers over the chair. Now. Now, here goes the coat. Mm. Mm -hmm. Not bad. What the Turn man of distinction is wearing this season? <laughs> now, what's wrong? Hey, tell me. It isn't polite just to stand and laugh at people. I'm sorry. If I were a shy, shrinking violet, but it would not. do something to me. It's the tails, and... <laughs> well, naturally, it's the tail. Oh, you're not the type, David. And why am I not the type? You're still smoking your pipe and that coat and your trousers. And what's wrong with my trousers? Nothing, darling, except they're hanging over the chair. <laughs> Whoops. Whoops. So they are. So they are. <laughs> darling, even if you're not the type, I prefer you as you are. Well, who can that be at this hour of the night? I don't know. I'll see. Hey, wait, wait. Don't let him in my trousers. Let me get in the bedroom. Claudia. Hello, David. 
Well, I seem to be providing both of you ladies with a degree of unrestrained, and if I may say so, unseemly laughter this evening. <laughs> Can I really be that funny? Oh, David, that coat. Mm, what's wrong with this coat? And those shorts. Now, both of you ladies have seen shorts before. But I've never seen them before in combination with the tails of a full-dress coat. <laughs> what is this? A fancy dress party? I am going to the opera. Like that. Mm, and if you hadn't, uh, if you'd have come in an instant later, you'd have found me gone. But you better hurry. It's after eight already. I smell something. Could it be mothballs? Yes, I think that's what it is. Claudia and I had about decided it was mothballs before you came in. We uh, didn't expect you this evening. Well, we wouldn't have planned to go out. Well, you needn't expect me now. Hurry along, get dressed, or you'll be late for the opera. Oh, we don't have to get there early. I don't come on until the second act. <laughs> you don't what? Don't come on. Sing. You know. <laughs> figaro, Figaro, Figaro. Did you say something, David? I said, Figaro. <laughs> yes, dear? I was singing. Oh, singing. Claudia, what? let's not go to the opera tonight. All right, let's not. You know, I have an idea that when Mama came over here this evening, she was she was lonely. It would be sort of mean just to pick up and walk out on her. Are you two children utterly crazy? Oh, we don't like the opera too much anyway. I'll never darken your door again. She'll <laughs> never darken our door again. Corn, pure corn, Mrs. Brown. Never darken our door again. I'm surprised at you. That went out with East Lynn. And I'll not be shouted down. She will not be shouted down. She will not be shouted down. She will not be shouted down. Will you be quiet? Here, now hurry up and get dressed. You're only half dressed, and you have tickets for the opera. Figaro, Figaro. I don't believe you really were going to the opera. You don't? Well, look here, the tickets. So they are. Well, I'll be. And box seats, too. There, next time you better believe it. Hold on a minute. Today's Wednesday, and these tickets are for Thursday night. Here, let me see. Let's see here now. What's it say? Uh, let's see, just as plain as you can... Right there it is. There they are. I can't read Thursday night, say. Claudia. That's what they are, Thursday night. They can't be. They can't be. Oh, they are. Uh, I say, old thing, uh, uh, think what an embarrassment it would have been to go to the opera <laughs> on the wrong night. <laughs> The wrong night. David thinks brrr. it's bad enough to go on the right night. <laughs> All story material used on this broadcast of Claudia was under the supervision of Rose Franken and William Brown Maloney. <laughs> American hospitality has never depended on extravagance. Being hospitable is easy, as easy as opening a bottle of ice-cold Coca-Cola. And now, happily, there's plenty of Coke to go round again. You can welcome stranger or friend. You can welcome your own companions or those of your children with the friendly words, Have a Coke. Then watch them sit back and enjoy your hospitality and the pause that refreshes. Every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you, transcribed, with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again tomorrow at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir and remember, whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola, for ice-cold Coca-Cola makes any pause the pause that refreshes.